Hey, what is up, everybody? Michael Crump back here again, talking about the latest and the greatest in PlayStation, homebrew news, and much, much more. Well, today I have a roundup of a number of PlayStation homebrew news, and for the most part, it's all going to be PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5. So let's just go ahead and let's jump straight into it. And so the first update that I have is this tweet that came through from Marcus00095, and that was a Sega Master System emulator for the PlayStation 4. Now, what is very interesting about this is, is that with this emulator, it's basically using some of the emulation that we've recently received from the PlayStation 1 as well as the PSP emulator that came out officially by Sony. So in this release, he takes advantage of that and he's able to create this bat file that you run on your computer and you can load up any of your Sega Master System ROMs and they will be playable on your PlayStation 4. So very cool if you're into Sega Master System. And next up, we also have another update from Marcus, and this time it is a PS2 to PS4. So this is version 1.0, and what this will allow you to do is to take your PS2 games and obviously convert them where they're going to be playable on your PlayStation 4. So there's a couple of different things that this comes with. There is a create PS2 game to PS4 option here, number one. There's another one here for the compatibility game list. And then number three, to install the .NET framework. So if you've been using any of Marcus's tools, which I've covered a couple of them, such as the PSP and the PS1, you will know that you need to install the .NET framework in order to get these to run. But another cool update there from Marcus. And then we have a, another update from Marcus, and this is the PlayStation 1 to PlayStation 4 application. So again, this is going to allow you to play your PlayStation 1 games on your PlayStation 4. It is using the new emulator that Sony released, and more specifically with Siphon Filter, I believe was one of the very first official PlayStation 1 games that Sony moved over to the PlayStation 4. So it's using that same emulator. So there is some enhancements to this. So you can do things such as skip the PlayStation logo, skip the start select help screen. You can add in other BIOSes, change the validation buttons. So typically that is the X and the O buttons, enable 60 frames per second, and then merge all .bin files to one automatically and then add the save data.png icon. So there is some information on the release that you can go to and you can check that out. Again, there is this simple mod for number one, which is one bin file and one Q file, or there is an expert mod or expert mode, which is for multi.bin files and one Q files. Now I did cover this version 1.0 back on my channel a couple of weeks ago. So if you want to take a look at this video first, just to see if it's something that interests you, then you can obviously go ahead and you can do that. Again, I'll walk you through step-by-step -step on how to do that. And again, mine was covering 1.0, so it was a single .bin file, .q file. Now, what's also interesting is, is that the community has started to put together this PlayStation 1 Classic Emulator compatibility list. So if there is a game that's already out there for PlayStation 1 that you're interested in playing on your PlayStation 4 through the use of this new emulator, then you can come and check out this compatibility list to see if your game is on this as well as how does it work. So. You can also check from PAL to NTSC to NTSC-J, and it will give you some information on if the game was playable or if the game was not playable. Then in a bit of quick PlayStation 5 news, there is a new PlayStation 5 Horizon bundle that Sony has been selling. There has been a lot of questions around, does this ship with 
firmware that's going to be compatible with some of the exploits or exploits that we think is going to happen? And well, the answer to that is no, because the PlayStation 5 Horizon bundle is coming pre-shipped with version 5.00. So if you are going to get one of those bundles, keep in mind it's going to start at 5.00. Obviously, as the months go by, as long as they keep this bundle as it is, you're just going to get you know later versions of the firmware installed on them. So again, it's best to get a PS5 that is not this Horizon bundle if you're looking at one that you're going to potentially be able to use some of the bd dash J exploits and other advanced developments that's happening in the scene. Back over to PlayStation 4, Sistro announced three days ago that there was a new frame per second counter that is going to be implemented. It says right here, it is a work in progress. And it says another request implemented. And if you look up here, there is the frames per second. And the game that he is playing here is Uncharted 4, I believe. And so in that game, up at the top, there is the frames per second, which is probably a little bit hard to see here. I'll try to zoom in in post-production there. But again, that's a improvement that I think a lot of people are looking forward to. And again, we still do not have Gold Hen version 2.3. So I've covered Gold Hen 2.2 and the betas on my channel here. But I'm really looking forward to Gold Hen 2.3 and seeing all of this stuff implemented in a final release form. Speaking of really cool releases, there is also a new PS4 Explorer version 2.0 that's going to be coming out by Lappy. So here is Control Execute, and he has a video on actually playing around with the new PS4 Explorer. A couple of the things that you will notice right off of the bat is, is that it has a brand new GUI or a brand new front end. Right there, he is actually adjusting the borders of the screen. There is the temperature, which was in there before, but now you can use Fahrenheit, or I don't believe that was in the previous versions. And obviously there is help. If we speed through the video here, a shot of what the help menu looks like. And so another kind of nice feature here is this send to. So you could send this to data or to one of your USBs if they're already mounted. Obviously you can do things such as rename, copy, paste. It's got this nice little keyboard, which again, I believe was in the previous version of it. And there is some advanced options here to search through the files and the folders, set something as the home, download a URL, activate FTP, and then get full read-write permissions. Again, you can check out this video if you want to see all of the different features, but I'm definitely looking forward to PS4 Explorer 2.0. Then we had an update on the PS5 front from Slayer's Govi, and it was added code for truly arbitrary function call. This proof of concept now lists the root, which is not possible from Java, and there is the ISO image. I did cover this completely on my channel about an hour after it dropped, simply because I was just at home at that time. And this is what the output of that ISO image is. So here is app zero, which we already had. And then now there is the directory listing of slash, which is just the root. So you can see that we've got a disk in here. So this is interesting we would be able to see the contents of what's on a disk and hopefully be able to do stuff with them in the future. There is the download zero, there's a dev, there is obviously the app zero, which here's the listing of that. And then there is a few more folders that's down at the bottom. So definitely check out my video if you wanna hear my take on it. I absolutely believe that this is great progress for the scene. And I always look at each system that's come out as there's different steps that has to take place in order to get full exploits. I'm seeing the PS5 scene taking those little baby steps that I believe is going to eventually result in a full 
featured exploit, and I cannot wait for it. And then if you're on a PlayStation 4 system that has homebrew running on it, one of the biggest difficulties is, is that you can't connect to the PSN in order to sync your trophies and to see all of your trophy progress that you've made. Well, with this application, this is going to allow you to be able to calculate the trophies that you've collected on your jailbroken system. Now, it's not going to do much more than that, but what's kind of cool about it is, is that if you have been playing a lot of games on a homebrew PS4, obviously you're probably never going to connect it to the PlayStation Network again. You can still see your progress through this utility. Now, it's not going to sync it to PlayStation Network. That's never going to happen. But at least for your own personal benefits, uh, you could use this and you could see your trophies. And then keep in mind that this is still a fairly new project. So, you know, it's been around for maybe about two months, but I just now started to see a couple of people talking about it. Chrome is required to run this application, and you can check out all of the different things uh, that it has. Again, the links to this and the links to all of these will be in the description below. And then there was this news over here on Reddit that I debated about including here, but I thought it may lead to something. And what it was was that on the PlayStation 4 Mega Man Legacy Collection 2, it uses the Xbox 360, Xbox Live version of Mega Man 10. So on the Xbox 360, those files are called XEX, which is the Xbox executables. And what was interesting, at least according to this user, is, is that in Mega Man Legacy Collection 2, that it is using those XEX file formats that the Xbox 360 has. So over here is an image of what I believe to be the PlayStation 4 game, which is this one right here, and that this is what looks what it looks like on the Xbox 360. Now, the reason that this news could be substantial is is because if we were able to run XEX executables on a PlayStation 4, which at least this user is saying that we are able to with this one game, obviously that may open up a brand new world of being able to play Xbox 360 you know, live arcade games on your PlayStation 4, which I think would be very amazing and be very, very, very cool to see. You're going to have to kind of wait for the developments of this. I haven't heard anybody really investigating and checking this out just now, but if you do have a copy of this game, Mega Man Legacy Collection 2, it may be worth taking a look at the contents of it and just exploring around it a little bit. I have added that to one of my list of things that I want to investigate for myself, but again, I'll include the link to this Reddit post where you can read through the comments and make your own opinion. And then the last thing is over here with Spider-Man. PS4 save works on PC. So Spider-Man just dropped for the computer. And this person basically made a tutorial on how you could use your Spider-Man PS4 save over on your computer. Now, apparently this has already happened before because with God of War, you were also able to use your PlayStation 4 save on your PC. So if you are looking to do something like that, check out this tutorial right here. I think that he has you covered, at least in the comments. It seems like it is all good. Okay, so that's going to do it for this PlayStation Homebrew News. Don't forget to like the video. Drop me a comment down below. What was your favorite thing that I talked about today? Is there something that I missed? Let me know down in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I'm really trying to get to 10K, so I would greatly appreciate your support. All right, that's going to do it for this one. I'll see you on the next one. Michael, out!